of course, he thought when he came to our network, the Bears would be 3-0. and They'd be the talk of the NFL. <laughs> and instead, they're just Will Levis judgment from being 0-3. <laughs> so I did say this. I did find myself watching Jaden Daniels, who was not just good against a desperate Cincinnati team. It was literally like they haven't punted or had a turnover in multiple weeks. That never happened even with Brady. And it does feel a little, Danny, a little like last year with C.J. Stroud about three to four games in with Bryce Young, where you're like, yeah, this this isn't close. The two's way better than the one. So that's the truth so far. Has that even entered? Have you even considered that for a moment, or is it going to get better for Caleb? It already has gotten better okay. for Caleb. I mean, in, 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 ga in game one, he didn't even throw for 100 yards. And then, and then in game two on Sunday Night Football, you know, it's 170-something yards, and he rushes for 44, and he <laughs> makes more plays from the pocket, and they're right. down a score late in the fourth quarter against the Texans. And then last week, uh, yeah, some of it was in garbage time, and some of it's a Hail Mary at the end of the first half, but it's 360 passing yards and, and, and a couple of scores. So it, it's three games. Um, Washington fans have seen RG3 look amazing as a rookie and then not. Yeah. Mitch Trubisky had a six touchdown game. So let's just okay. let's just pump the brakes here. Caleb Williams is going to be fine. I have no buyer's remorse okay. yet. Uh, that's all I'm asking. I'm not saying it's a lemon. I, I, just, I, I just said broke down I, in the I don't freeway. Like it. <laughs> I, I don't I don't like your tone. I, I don't I don't like Carton's tone. I don't like Schlereth's tone on Breakfast Ball. They're all taking a little too much joy at the pot. Like, oh, have you seen Justin Fields? He's undefeated. You wish he was still the Bears quarterback? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm fine. But, it's going to be fine. But I will, I will say this because I was never a fan of Justin Fields, and you got a lot of crap for bailing on him much earlier than the rest of the Chicago media. I will say this. Structure matters. Pittsburgh's got better structure than Chicago. And the fact that he's completing 73% of his throws, you watch him play, he's, he's, he's seeing the field. Like, you're a little surprised how effective he's been just in the efficiency department, are you not? This is a product of coaching, and Pittsburgh deserves a ton of credit. Arthur Smith deserves a ton of credit. And Justin Fields deserves a ton of credit. They have done in Pittsburgh in one year, through three games, what Luke Getze and Matt Nagy were not able to do for Justin Fields in three years, which is he fumbled the ball way too much and he took way too many sacks. Yeah. His turnovers are down, his sack numbers are way down, and the efficiency is way up. So Justin Fields deserves credit, but let's not kid ourselves. Pittsburgh is undefeated because their defense is allowing nine points per game. Right. They're they're 28th in they're 28th in passing yards. Yeah. They're 24th uh, in points. They're dead last in offensive touchdowns. So, the offense is bottom five, bottom six in the league at every metric you could possibly look at when it comes to scoring or passing the football. He's just not making big mistakes. Which credit to him, he used to make big mistakes, and credit to Arthur Smith for putting him in that spot. But he's not the long-term answer in Pittsburgh based on what he's shown through three weeks. So um, now that you're more national, like when you're in a local hole, you're doing a lot of Bears, Cubs, uh, no question. You'll, you'll delve into occasional national issues. But now you're at FS1. You understand the, the power of the Cowboys. Tom Brady now is essentially an employee of Fox and the Cowboys. <laughs> Those are the games we put Tom on. And so... I've never really heard a lot about Dallas, and my takeaway is I always say the same thing about Dallas every year. They'll be pretty good, and that's what they are virtually every year. But I don't think they're a Super Bowl team. I said I thought they'd have slight regression. Uh, they just don't have money. CD got paid. Dak got paid. Mike will get paid. They're going to be up against the cap for years. What is your take? You know, in baseball, it's nostalgia. But in tech and the NFL, we don't care about that. Win in January. How do you view the Cowboys when you now from Chicago to us? How do you view it? How in your world? How do you look at them? Well, they've won 12 games three years in a row and then done nothing in the postseason. And they led the league in scoring last year. So they were good and worthy of discussion. And then they also have this ability to generate stories out of nothing because their owner is their general manager who does postgame press conferences and has his own radio show. So he like he 
he fuels this whole sports take industrial complex that we are a part of where it's like, oh, my God, it's Wednesday. It's the slowest day of the NFL week. <laughs> but Jerry Jones spoke yesterday. You know, so it's, it's all by design. He loves the noise. He loves the chaos. It's not a coincidence that he announced the Dak Prescott contract extension two hours before kickoff of the opener. We're like, wow, it's a distraction. It's noise. That's the chaos that they thrive on. But on the field, to me, they're the bully at the playground. Like, I don't know what your grade school was or whatever, but for me, there was a grade school like fifth through eighth grade, and then you went off to high school. So the eighth grader is the bully against the fifth grader. But then next year, they're the kid that gets bullied when they're the ninth grader by the juniors and seniors. Dallas beats bad teams. They, they beat bad teams, but when they play good teams, when they play up in competition, they get bullied because the formula is really out on them, which is basically you run the ball at Dallas and they're going to fold up shop. Yeah. And so that's what happened last week. They'll probably beat the Giants. And then when they play a good team again, they'll lose. OK, I'm going to give you a team that we think is good, probably has the best roster and are struggling. San Francisco, lay it out for me. I, I put them in my herd hierarchy and I didn't put the Steelers in, I still buy them. What say you? I, I did the exact same thing today on Breakfast Ball. They, Kyle Shanahan deserves the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. And Debo will be back, and Trent Williams will be back, and Kittle will be back, and we'll see about McCaffrey. But McCaffrey goes out, and Mason produces. Everyone produces. De Devontae Freeman produced in a Kyle Shanahan system at running back. Alfred Morris produced in a Kyle, Han Kyle Shanahan system at running back. So if he can get Jimmy Garoppolo into a Super Bowl and he can get Brock Purdy into a Super Bowl, he can weather these injuries right now. I think they're the safest bet week in and week out to be good, and eventually they'll get healthy. By the way, his family, his lovely family is still in Chicago. Danny is in New York um, and around Times Square and uh, had a great line during the break. I said, what do you make a Times Square, Danny? And your your interpretation was what? This was very funny. Oh, well, th thank you. Yeah, it's it. I am a married man with kids who lives in suburbia, and now I'm living out of a hotel in Times Square. It's like, so instead of walking to like, you know, a pharmacy or a grocery store, it's there's a Bubba Gump shrimp <laughs> or the M&M store or like a naked cowboy trying to sell me a fake Rolex. Like, it's just, it's, I'm living in like a dystopian world. And like, I'm on TV and not the radio. I'm not with my wife. I'm not with my kids. I don't know what the hell's going on in my life, Colin. It's all very, very strange. Danny Parker. It's very strange. Yes, it is. Yes, Times Square and life is. Good, Danny. Great seeing you as always, buddy. Thank you, Colin. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.